Mriganga Jaipuria of uh, S&P Global Plus is joining us right now on the phone line. Uh, uh, thanks very much, Mriganga, for taking out the time and speaking with us. Uh, this, uh, you know, we were just about dealing with the issues of coronavirus, and then comes the other, uh, uh, you know, a big issue of crude oil prices and the collapse that we are seeing there. What's your sense of, uh, you know, what you've made out of these pricing collapse, of this pricing collapse? And do you also believe that there is a very high probability of crude going down to levels of $20? Uh, the pricing collapse actually didn't come entirely as a surprise after what happened at the OPEC plus meeting in Vienna in uh, earlier this month. We were already seeing the demand shock with the coronavirus at that time still it, it hadn't yet spread as rapidly as, as it has now, but China was seeing immense demand destruction and the market was looking out to the Saudis and the Russians to come up with some sort of a supply cut agreement that would balance the oil markets. So the collapse in oil prices hasn't come as, as a surprise. Um, you know, if you just look at the demand scenario, the destruction is very, very real. Platts Analytics has cut its demand growth outlook for 2020 to its, we are now expecting a contraction of 3 million barrels per day. This, uh, to put this in context, when we started the year, we were expecting oil demand to grow by over 1 million barrels per day, and now we're expecting it to shrink by 3 million barrels per day. So you have that scenario. We do not know what uh, the path of COVID-19 is going to be, right? I mean, it's, it's been spreading rapidly. Factories are shutting down. Flights have ground to a halt. Essentially, the global economy has ground to a halt, and that completely destroys demand. And we do not know when that is going to pick up. So you have these two scenarios, and then you have the Saudis aggressively fighting for market share. You've got the Saudis coming out and saying we're going to be producing 3 million barrels per day more right now when we're expecting demand destruction of 3 million barrels per day. They are going to boost their exports by about 37, 35 to 37 percent at a time when there is no demand for oil. So, so the collapse in oil prices is, is not entirely a surprise. I think it, we were waiting for it to happen. Uh, so, you know, just to get in a sense from you, you know, what lies on the table now? What are the options that are there on the table if there has to be any kind of price stability for crude oil? Uh, the, you know, uh, I think at the moment we just need to need to watch out for how for any potential demand recovery. Uh, it is very clear that the Saudis and the Russians are not going to go back to the table. I, I uh, you know, the, the Russia has come out and said that uh, there is there is very limited possibility of us getting back and negotiating on supply cuts. Saudis pulled out of a technical committee meeting that never went ahead. Uh, the Saudis have, uh, like I mentioned earlier, they 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 uh, they also slashed crude prices uh, for for their oil liftings in April. So right now, from the looks of it, the the stability has to come from the demand side. The supply side is is a free for all. Uh, are the Saudis and the Russians, for how long will they be able to withstand low oil prices? I think Saudi Arabia and Russia will be able to withstand it a lot better than some of the other OPEC producers like Nigeria, Iraq. They're going to be suffering the brunt of this a lot more. Uh, for, for the Saudis, their crude production price is under $5 a barrel. For the Russians, for their legacy fields, it's about $10 per barrel. Uh, for the for the higher cost fields, yes, it goes up to about dollar thirty to thirty five per barrel. Yes, they will face fiscal pain because the fiscal break even price for Saudi Arabia is north of eighty dollars, and for Russia, it's north of fifty dollars. So they will bear fiscal pain, but but the the their behavior, their their policies are showing that they are willing to bear that fiscal pain to grab back that market share that they have lost over the last two to three years to to U.S. shale producers, to other non-OPEC producers. So they will bear that fiscal pain. They will 
push for uh, for more supply into the market. Russia has already said that it could pump another half a million barrels per day. By the end of this year, they will be able to bring back that production on stream. The Saudis, like I mentioned, have categorically said they will be pumping a, an additional three million barrels per day for the next few months. So the, there's going to be immense supply in the market. And not to forget countries like Libya, which have been uh, which are out one million barrels per day due to geopolitical reasons, that, that oil could come back into the market as well. So the downside risks to prices are very high right now. Yep, yep. Um, we leave it at that, Mirganka. It was great chatting with you. Uh, you know, really serious implications of crude oil prices coming off to these levels. Uh, thanks very much. Appreciate it.